Out of my way, bucko! Well, that was cool, L letting the wheel just kind of recenter itself. Hit the brakes. Oh, I didn't do it fast enough. <laughs> ah! <laughs> What's going on? Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. I'm super excited because I have always loved racing games, but I keep playing them on this because it hasn't been since I was a kid that I had an actual wheel for driving racing games on my computer or on my PlayStation. So that's why I'm so excited about getting this out the box. Now I'm just gonna jump straight into unboxing this thing because in fact, of course, inside this box, there is another box. But the reason I'm getting it is because I started getting into racing games on my computer. So one of the main ones was this game, Assetto Corsa, which is way more difficult than any racing game I ever played as a kid because when I was a kid, I played all the classics like Ridge Racer, NASCAR. I actually had a really cool racing wheel at the time, which was more like one of those two-handed flight yokes for flying a plane, and you could, you know, push it forward and backwards as well to use it for a plane, or you could lock it in place and use it like a driving wheel. Let's get it out of the box. It's been literally decades since I actually played a racing game with a wheel, so this is really exciting. But what is the reason that I decided to get it now rather than before? And the real reason is actually because, one, on the Steam Summer Sale, games like Assetto Corso are like, four dollars or five dollars it's super cheap and apparently very very realistic but the second main reason is vr i really like the idea of playing a racing game in vr i tried playing assetto corso in v vr and i was like whoa but then i was trying to drive with this and i was like vroom vroom break break vroom vroom oh this is really difficult to drive with a pad controller that's why i'm so excited about getting this out the box i believe it came out like six years ago so this is a really old product and it, in fact i think it's actually been discontinued but the new one that has replaced it is a hundred dollars more and you can't and doesn't include the shifter for that price you can see it's got the logic cool branding as opposed to the logic tech branding but it, i feel like it does cost a bit more to get into sim racing and stuff in japan pull the flap open and ha 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 the first thing to come out of here is the the wheel itself let's get this out the plastic that looks super crazy oh my goodness and it feels nice and heavy duty. It's got all the buttons you might expect for a PlayStation controller, plus it is a wheel and it has these cool paddles for shifting the gears up and down. And then on the base of it, it has the cable, which you can wind up and hopefully keep that well managed. And these are the clips that you're going to use to click it to your desk or if you've got like one of those special like cages, you can like sit yourself in a racing cage for full racing simulation. In that case, I think you might be able to bolt it down with these bolts. That feels the biz. That feels so nice. It does have a D-pad on it as well. D-pad seems fairly reasonable, but it does push down in the middle. But again, the main point of this is to use it for racing games. Check this out. Wow. <laughs> I mean, if you're really into sim racing, maybe this stuff doesn't look expensive to you, but to a complete noob racer like myself, this all looks really cool and premium because it's shiny aluminium and it's got leatherette stuff on it that makes it feel the biz. And wow, you, you, you know, it's even like got a little, you like need fair amount of pressure to push on these pedals. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And last but not least, another unboxing. So you don't actually have to buy this, it's just a completely separate add-on, but I bought this thinking it would be fun to do some simulated driving because actually I'm not really getting into sim racing for the whole like racing aspect of it. I just like the idea of the simulation of driving. So I'm actually quite excited about potentially using this for like the truck simulator game. I really love the idea of being able to go out driving and do the kind of driving that I wouldn't do even if I had a really nice car. I don't have a really nice car, by the way. I have a nice car, but it's not a really nice car. I don't think I would want to drive like a maniac and drive really, really fast and drift around corners in real life anyway. So I personally am investing in sort of driving hardware because I like the idea of doing all this stuff that I totally wouldn't do in real life, even if I had the money to do it. It's just like, 
Yeah, but it's really dangerous. I don't want to do that. This is the shifter. It looks just like, it looks exactly like the shifter you might find in an actual car. That's so nuts. This reminds me of the day that I got my first large size arcade stick, which is in fact, it's actually the box right there, that red box there. Instead of using a peripheral that I can use for a driving game, using a large size peripheral, which is designed for the task. That's exciting. Check this out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll just give you some ASMR here. Maybe you're looking at this going, that sounds terrible and plastic. To me, it sounds really cool. And this is just like the wheelbase. It's also got these clips that you can use to secure it to your desk. All right, I'll just give you a closer look at the gear shifter. This looks like they ripped it straight out of a car. And I think it's especially because of this leatherette thing, which is covering the actual shaft. I have a funny feeling that even when I'm in a racing game, I'm still going to be holding it like I would hold the ball top of one of my standard arcade sticks for fighting games. I think that looks absolutely amazing. And then while we're at it, let's just look at the wheel itself. It's got your D-pad over here and your buttons. And I, I actually don't know what this is. I'm assuming it's like R1 one way and then L1 the other way, but I'm actually not sure. And uh, just check out these these paddles. I think that's what makes it the most, that's what makes it feel the most like a race car thing. Actually, the front of it just looks like the front of a car, come to think of it. All right, I'm super excited about plugging this in and trying it. And really the main reason I'm so excited is because this is not like just a standard wheel that you use for controlling more realistically. The thing is when you get to about $300 and up, these wheels start doing something called force feedback. So when you're driving the car, sometimes the wheel will kind of move on its own because the wheels are being dragged along the ground in a real car, right? But on a wheel that doesn't have force feedback, it won't. It'll kind of go there and it will just, I think it will just kind of automatically go back to the center position or it might just get stuck in that position. But with force feedback, like the position of the wheels in the car will actually cause this wheel to move around automatically with the position of those wheels of the car. And that's why I'm super excited about this wheel in particular. I, th I think it's totally possible to play on a controller that doesn't have force feedback, especially if you're into just racing games and not into it for the simulation aspect, but that's the reason I've chosen this particular model. And again, the only reason I didn't go for the updated model, which is the G923, is because it was like $100 extra and wouldn't have included the shifter. So all in all, I'd have had to pay $150 extra to get the same setup, but with the more improved wheel. Anyway, it's getting kind of stressful looking at it and not actually having my hands on it and driving it. So I'm gonna boot up a racing game right now. Let's plug in the G29 and let's try this in a racing game as a completely new racer to sim racing. What? You knew I had to do it. All right, I've got the G29 set up on my desk here, and it's actually quite simple to set up. You just clamp it on to your desk, and there's three cables that go into it, and one cable that comes out of it. So the shifter, the power cable, and the pedals, they all have cables that go into this base station here in the middle. And then one USB cable comes out to the PC, and we're actually going to plug it in right now. All right, so the USB, whoa, it's come to life. Wow, that's kind of scary. Well, the last things we need to do before we can get really into some games is to take off the plastic. Here comes the plastic off the PlayStation logo here in the middle and off the G logo here from the shifter. And now we are ready to roll. So the way that I made this setup for my desk is actually very, very ghetto. So it's like a cable management box, which is holding these pedals in place so that they don't shift around. And behind me, I've actually put a sleeping, <laughs> I don't have anything heavy enough. So I put a box with an arcade stick in it and a sleeping bag. So the sleeping bag is preventing my, my chair from rolling too far back because it's getting caught in the wheels, fortunately. But then as you can see, the wheel itself isn't going anywhere. I think maybe when this starts to shake a bit, it might start shaking my camera. Cause as you can see, I've got that on a little tabletop tripod, but it's a little bit ghetto for now, but that is what the G stands for in logical. Just kidding. Okay, let's jump into some racing games. I'm going to boot up Assetto Corsa and let's see if we can get this wheel running. All right, I've got Assetto Corsa 
booted up here and I have never tried this before and I've got none of the controls set up. Do I actually have to change these things myself? Throttle is gonna be on accelerator. Click on the brakes. That's interesting. I thought this would all be done automatically. All right, one more thing. Apparently you have to have it inverted. So as you can see, that line goes up when I press down on the throttle control here. But if you don't have it inverted, it stays at full and then you let go of it to turn it off, which is really weird. So. I, just, I, can't, I can't understand why by default you would have to invert it, but that's, that's, you know, I'm a noob to all of this, so this is very exciting. All right, I think it is set up. If I press on the accelerator so you can see my feet down here, I'm going to press down on the throttle. Wow, you can see the car. Whoa, whoa, and you can see it's already kind of shaking, and it's completely... Wow, that is awesome. So when I move this wheel, I actually see my hands moving in real life. Of course, now in a real car, I wouldn't dry steer like this. And we're off to the races. Push very lightly on the throttle. And we're moving. That, oh, this is crazy. Now, the only thing is you, there's no force feedback on the throttle. because I'm very sensitive to that sort of thing. Oh, I should probably gear up, shouldn't I? I feel like I'm quite sensitive to that sort of thing. Normally, in a real car, I kind of feel the car shaking through the rumble of the of the gears. Do these gears not... Wow, wow! Oh my goodness. You have to push really hard. There's so much force feedback. I have to, like, really push on this wheel. This is nuts. Hold on, hold on. Hit the brakes. Oh, I didn't do it fast enough. Ah, oh, I crashed. <laughs> ah! <laughs> What's going on? This is terrifying. Okay, it, it just kind of automatically gears up for me, so I'm just going to let it do it for me. This is terrifying! Oh my god! <laughs> when you actually crash it, it, it shakes the wheel. That's kind of amazing. Okay. I'm not going to play around with the gears now. This is so hard! Should have chosen an easier track. Ah. <laughs> I can't turn! Turn the car, man. Oh my goodness. My hands are twisted around. I'll tell you what. This is amazing. I'm never getting in a real car ever again. What is the point? Alright, finally. Some long, easy, not too much curving. I'm trying to follow this, this, this driving line. I am doing this whole course in second gear. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> it's coming off. Oh dear, I didn't tighten it enough to the to the desk. All right, this is the career mode, and this is literally N1 level one novice series. Let's do this time attack in this in this little car. Gear up, let's go. Fortunately, all the gears are changing automatically for me. I'm gonna break. Uh... Oh, that was significantly easier than on a on a pad controller. Okay, let's go around and break, 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 break. This is hard. Oh, I don't want to spin out of control. So this is super cool because. Oh no, <laughs> let's let's. Let's handbrake turn. Not handbrake turn. Let's drift. Drift around this corner. Oh, yeah. I am a speed demon in this Abarth. Oh, wow. This is so much easier than driving with a pad controller. Oh, my goodness. I'm freaking out right now. All right. Slow down for the corner. Ah! Not too far. Oh, no. I need to start accelerating. All right. Let's go. I don't know if this is necessary, but I love seeing the wheel, like the virtual wheel, doing what I'm doing in real life. But because it's kind of one-to-one -one with the position of the actual wheel in real life, this is going to make so much sense when I go into virtual reality doing this. But what's really awesome about this is you get a really, you like get a sense of how much the car does or doesn't want to turn because it's got like force feedback. Like the first time I got into Beat Saber, I was like, I'm never leaving home again. And now that I've got this racing game, I'm like, okay, now I'm never leaving. Oh, am I supposed to use my left foot for the brakes? I've been using my right foot for the brakes. 
now that I've got this racing wheel and virtuality, I have twice as many reasons to never leave home. All right, you know what? It's time to go straight in for the race. Let's put them on 80% opponent strength. I'm feeling lucky. All right, here we go. We're going straight into the race. Pedal to the metal. Oh no. Come back everyone. I got this, I got this. Okay, the first, the first corner didn't go so well. Wow, that was cool, Let, letting the wheel just kind of recenter itself and then catching it. <laughs> I don't know if that's correct, but that's what I did. All right, we got this, we got this. Hit the brakes! No, 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 go, go. Okay, this is, this can't be salvaged. Let's restart session, restart session. I, I, did, I thought there was gonna be a green light. It's just, the red light just turned off. I'm just gonna break when everyone else is breaking. This seems like good timing. Okay, that was a little bit rough. Out of my way, bucko! Out of the way! I'm driving here! That's right! I'm making a video! I gotta look- I gotta look cool in front of all my friends! Out of my way! Out of my way! Etiquette, schmetiquette! I'm a racer! Out of my way! Yes! What position we're in? Fifth out of- Ow! Oh, sorry, 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 get out of my way, get out of my way! Oh no, we just lost all the positions except for that one guy whose car we crashed. Sorry! Out of the way, bucko! Yes! Ah, hit the brakes! Ah! Oh, you got to break so much earlier than that. Is the guy behind me still racing? He came back! <laughs> I thought he gave up. He's like, I ain't coming down without a fight. If I can get anything that's above 8th place, I'll be happy. No, no, don't overtake me. Not here, not here, not here. Yes. Oh, we got this. Floor it. Oh, no, that's not the end. Oh, session over. Okay, 5th place. Haha. <laughs> I am so happy with that. That was an absolute disgrace and probably the worst racing that has ever existed. But... I had a whale of a time. <laughs> Knocked everyone else's car off the track, so probably poor etiquette, but <laughs> you know, as a complete beginner, I think that's where you have to start, right? Well, here's my conclusion about the G29. This thing is amazing, absolutely amazing. I feel like I'm actually sat in a car. I'm sure that you could get way more realistic, obviously having a better field of view and, you know, a car, uh, like a, a seat that actually shakes or, you know, better driving position or I should have probably put on some shoes or I'm sure there's quite a lot you can do to, to go into the, you know, thousands of dollars worth of equipment to make this really realistic. But I'm sticking here with my, what should be a $250 wheel, but what cost me basically 350 here in Japan because... That's just Japan. That's just how Japan is. My, in, my, my conclusion after all this is that this wheel is absolutely awesome, but I am nowhere, I'm really not much better than when I play on this, on this DualShock controller. And that's because I just don't know how to make the use, make the use of it. And it's the same thing that happens when you get an arcade stick. When you try to go from like a pad controller for Street Fighter, and then you move over to something like an arcade stick. You'll probably notice on you know day one that you're just much worse. You're just much worse because you you're you're trying to do something completely different with your hands. Like moving your arms around like this is not the same as moving your thumbs around and your index fingers on the accelerators like this. I'm trying to coordinate my eyes with my hands and my feet now and it's a completely different experience and it's super realistic super fun and if i weren't actually in a race i think this would be super fun for just really casual trucking around i might actually boot up the truck simulator later on i wish i had bought one of these way way sooner and i, I wish i hadn't been scared of the price i think it's easy to look at these things and go like, yeah, but for $250, I could be buying something else. Or, you know, for $350, I could buy a Nintendo, I could buy that new OLED in Nintendo Switch. Or for $400, I could buy myself a Steam Deck. You're always thinking about what else you could be buying. But what you don't know is that this is probably, I mean, 
I've just bought this myself. This isn't sponsored or anything, but I'm, I'm guessing this is actually at the very low end of the market to buy these things, but you definitely get a lot of the feeling of being in a car. And I can only say that because I drive a real car in real life. I've never driven race cars like this and I've never driven on racetracks like this, but definitely I got a lot of the feel of, you know, one, turning the wheel, having that forced feedback. But then what's really exciting is that because it's like locked to the position of the wheels in the actual game, like you can be turning and then you can just let go of it and let the wheel just kind of recenter itself. I, I say recenter itself. Sometimes, I guess if the wheels are actually flying the opposite direction, it actually goes all the way like too far as well. So it's just got a life of its own and you feel like you're interacting with a living thing. You know, obviously car is not a living thing, but you know, it's a moving thing that has life to it and you don't get that feeling, obviously, when you play with an analog stick because, you know, you let go and it can only ever really go back to neutral. This thing, it's just like, it moves a little bit or it moves a lot of bit or it goes way past the center or it goes only to the center. It rumbles while you're driving. It pushes against you. You're like trying to push left and it's trying to push right. I don't know what else to say. This thing is freaking awesome and I wish I had bought one sooner. You think of the price in a very different way after you've got one in your hands. And I think it's the same thing with an arcade stick. If you've never bought an arcade stick before, you're like, yeah, but you know, just a, a DualShock controller that only cost me like 60 or $70. And why would I want to spend $250 on an arcade stick? Once you've actually got a $250 arcade stick, you're like, what was I worried about before buying it? In fact, now I'm thinking about buying arcade sticks that are $400 or $500. Not that there's, there's actually not that many arcade sticks that do, that cost that much. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this very, very brief look at the G29. It's an old wheel that's already discontinued, but it is so much fun. And if you can get one at a budget, like if, if you can get one pre-owned or something, that go like I, I highly highly recommend it I highly recommend it I bought mine brand new because I couldn't find one pre-owned here in Japan and it was overpriced but even at the overpriced cost of like $350 which is what I paid for it I'm I'm still totally happy with my purchase anyway if you're not already subscribed to the channel do please subscribe to the channel click that like button leave me a comment and if you're not following me on Twitter or on Twitch, the links are down below. And if you want to hang out with people who watch this channel and are interested in the gear that I show on this channel or the games that I play on this channel, you can join us on the Nihongo Gamer Discord. <sighs> I'm going to boot up more games and I'm just going to race all night now. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.